Folks, if you look here, as I mentioned before, this is the process that we go through. It's ready, aim, acquire, okay? Ready, because we get ready to figure out who we're going to go after. Aim is when you take aim at a certain uh, a client or avatar or a prospect and, and turn them into a client. And then acquire is when you acquire the listings, you manage them, and then hopefully, if you're doing your playing your cards right, you'll be able to learn how to increase your chances of double ending the deal, okay? So last week we went over, like I always like to begin with the end in mind, like we talk about, okay? So um, last week I put together uh, a training on the, 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 the final part, the acquire part. Very, very important, okay? Being able to pitch the listing, right? Knowing the statements to make so that they know that you know what you're talking about. The questions to ask to reveal motors true uh, uh, owners true motivations. You guys, we've talked about this before. And write this down. Who, who here wants a, a good writer downer? Okay. Hope you all have pen and paper. Okay. Price motivated is not motivated. If you hear me say it once, you'll hear me say it a thousand times. I can't tell you how many people they come to me and they're like, oh man, I got this great new lead. And what he or she said was, if you get me a seller at you know, 2.5 million, I'll make sure that I sell it to you. And I say, BS, why? Because I've done it a hundred times. I used to do off-market deals and you go out and you run around, you do this and you do that. And at the end of the day, what winds up happening? They wind up not selling when you bring them a, a buyer, right? I hate to sound uh, uh, cynical, but it's happened enough times where, and if you think about the psychology, when, when a human being doesn't have skin in the game, right? They're not that committed. And an owner that when you're working with them off market, if they don't have some sort of skin in the game, you are just running around in circles, chasing your tail. And you're not necessarily, um, they're not committed to the process. Okay, guys. So very, very important, and, uh, important to understand how to pitch uh, listings, right? The data to bring when you go to a, 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 a listing presentation. What do I mean by data? The what's going on in the market, okay? And then so that you can make sure that, that, that you, they understand the amount of time necessary, okay? What are, what are the average months on market, okay? What about the pricing data? What is their property worth? Most people's properties are worth whatever they think their retirement package is worth. Who, who here is with me? Oh, by the way, guys, let's see those beautiful faces. I'm staring at a big black screen with the exception of, of my brand newest student, Raj, right? I'm looking at a bare screen. So let, let's see. Let's see some beautiful faces. Come on, Candy. Hop on here, Derek. Yeah, there we go, Joseph. What's up, buddy? Ekaterina. Come on. Let's see those beautiful faces. There we go. I want to make sure that I'm talking to human beings here. Who's, who's with me? All right. Okay, cool. There's Mickey. What's up, Mickey? So here's the story, guys, right? What it comes down to is this. When, when you... Uh, go by a data-driven approach, right? Which is what we recommend in, in the pitching portion. You have to be able to understand that you, you know, it's hard to, to uh, persuade someone without data because when you're in front of an owner, what do they think? They think everything that comes out of your mouth is you just trying to get the listing and everything that, that they think is gold, right? But when you point to something other than uh, what your opinion is and maybe to facts and figures, what I always say to owners is, Listen, Mr. Or Mrs. Seller, right? Brokers might come in here and, and, and tell you stories, but the numbers, the numbers will never lie to you. One and one will always equal two. So that's why I think the data suggests, the information recommends what we're seeing in the market, right? Does that make sense, guys? Type a one in the chat if that makes sense, how you never want to just go out and just give your opinion on something, right? Type a one in the chat if that makes sense to you, okay? So, so just briefly, uh, we, we show you how to manage properties, when to take uh, property, uh, I'm sorry, price reductions on properties, when and how to manage your listings. You know, when, when do you got to cut bait? Because it's just the person's not moving. It doesn't make any sense, okay? And then finally, how to double end deals. How many of you would like to double end deals like my boy, Abby? out in, in uh, Northern Indiana, he, he double ends 40% of his listings that he sells, right? Type of 40 in the chat if you guys would like to double end 40%. Yes, okay, awesome. Can you guys hear me? Uh, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me loud and clear. Someone said that the audio is extremely low. Okay, cool, all right, sweet. So guys, we're gonna take it back. So I just wanted to do a quick review of last week. This week, we're gonna take it back a little bit further and we're gonna go over the aim portion. Now, let me set the stage. You've already done your research. You've already figured out who you're going to reach out to. 
You already know um, how to get a hold of them. You even found, because all my students have access to really, really quality data sources, um, you've already found their cell phone number. Okay. So now the question is, you're about to you're about to pick up the phone and do the scariest part of brokerage. By the way, guys, no one's ever died from a cold call. Okay, I've made over thirty five thousand of them. I promise you, I'm still here, I'm still swinging. Okay, no one's ever died from a cold call, but it's a whole lot more um, daunting of a task if you don't know the proper reason to call. Okay, you don't have the scripts. Okay, and the people that say scripts don't work, BS. And I'll, I'll prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you right this second that scripts work. Okay. Um, everybody do me a favor. Type your favorite movie in the chat. Let's see what everyone comes up with. Type your favorite movie ever. All right. Mine, I, I, I love Godfather, one of my favorites. I love Coming to America is one of my favorite comedies. Uh, like these are some of my favorite. American Beauty. Love it. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Yeah. Put that coffee down. Yes, exactly. What do we got? 21 and 22 Jump Street. Yes, love it. Godfather, Rocky's with me. Okay, guys, let me let me prove something to you. You love those movies. They move you. They make you laugh. They, they, they move you emotionally. Guess what, folks? Every single one of those movies came from words on a paper. So the people that say scripts don't work, are they're talking about bad scripts. Okay, they're talking about when a telemarketer calls you and it's a staticky connection and you can tell they're reading off a piece of paper. Uh, hello, uh, I would like to talk to you about your vehicle's uh, warranty, right? It's terrible, right? But the point is, folks, bad scripts don't work. Good scripts are burned into the pages of history. Folks, four score and seven years ago, that was a script, okay? Ask not what your country can do for you. That was a script. I have a dream, Dr. Martin Luther King. Guys, all these scripts, these, these speeches that moved us, that are, that are literally part of the history books that we all learned as kids, guess what? They all came from words on a paper. So we approach the call we, by reaching out to the right person, the right message at the right time. Think about it this way, guys. Type a one in the chat if you remember these bad boys from grade school or from, from high school, whatever, right? 24 to the right, 16 to the left, 14 to the right. Exactly, right? You get those three numbers right, and it does it open? You better believe it. Okay, now tell me this, guys, in the chat. What happens if you mix up, you, you get any one of those numbers wrong? What happens? Do you open the lock or not? Does it stay open? Or does it does it go get open or does it stay closed? It ain't open is what Mickey says. Start all over. Miranda says exactly. Yeah, you got to start over completely two turns to the right. That's the point, folks. So when if you're looking to have success on the phone, the reason why it's so tough is you got to line three things up. You have to have the right person at the right time with the right message. If you miss any one of those three things, right? You got the wrong person. It could be the right time, the right message. But they don't. If they don't own commercial property, you're getting nothing. Okay. <clears throat> if you could be the 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 right person, wrong time, you know, right message. Guess what? Maybe they just sold the property last week. Maybe they just bought the property. Whatever. Right. That's a right person, right message, wrong time. Okay. Right person, right time, wrong message. Hey, uh, have you ever thought of fill in the blank? Right. The point is, folks, you have to have all three elements lined up so that you can secure a listing meeting. Does that make sense, folks? Type a one in the chat if that makes sense, okay? You gotta have all three things. And that's why people are like, oh, I tried call, cold calling once and the people weren't very nice and uh, 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 I didn't get anything from it. Yeah, you know why? Because you were ill-prepared. Number one, you're probably calling the per wrong person with the wrong message. I'll give you guys a little teaser for next week, right? The reason why what we do works is the messaging lines up perfectly with the avatar because we did a shotgun approach and we s reached for people with a certain um, a certain profile, right? You cannot just call the phone book of people that own commercial properties. That doesn't work, guys, okay? Give you an example. Here in Miami, okay? Shout out to the 305, right? Here in Miami, right? There we go, 305, that's what's up. <laughs> but here's the thing. 
um, we have a 4% absorption rate in, in the, the, the industrial warehouse products, right? So what does that mean? Let, let me tell you what those numbers mean. Uh, it means that only 4% of the properties are going to be sold this year. Okay, let me take it a step further. You take 100 and you divide it by 4%. That means the average person holds a property for 25 years. Okay, so does it make sense why dialing just the, the if by creating a database of everybody who owns a property and just dialing them at random, why it doesn't work? Right, because you got a 96% chance that they're not going to sell this year. So what we have to do is we have to be a little bit more effective. We have to be a little bit more intentional with who we deliver the message to. Does that make sense, guys? Type an exclamation point in the chat if that's making sense, right? If you're like, oh, wow, so I can't just like dial the, the entire database, right? No, that doesn't work. And the companies that do that, they burn out young agents. That's what's best for the company, but not what's best for the young agents, okay? I'm not going to name any names, but we know those brokerages out there that say, what you need to do is you need to create a database of this little polygon in one property type, and I just want you to dial them over and over and over again. I see people drop it in the comments, no comment, all right? But the point is, folks, the point is you have to be deal dealing with the right person with the right message at the right time. And if you did your research properly, it's going to set you up for success when you call them. Make it a sense? Everybody good so far? Smile and dial, son. Exactly. Okay. So now what's what's next, guys, is once you dial them and you go through your script and you 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 make sure you you're what we're doing is we're sorting, guys, right? I I would be telling you a story if I told you that the script works every single time with every single person, right? We're not Merlin. We're not Kreskin. All right. We don't like bend minds. It's not what we do. What we do do is we sort through people to find people that need our help, right? If you just got done eating a meal and I offered you a really, really, and pepperoni pizza is your favorite and you are just absolutely stuffed. You know, so you just got done eating Thanksgiving dinner and you're absolutely stuffed. And I offered you a pepperoni pizza. Would you want it? Probably not. Why? Because like, you know, you're just not hungry. So, so the, the, the people that don't want our services, no matter how much you call them or pitch them or cajole them or follow up, they're just not interested. What we're looking to find is the people that need our services. Case in point. Um, let's say, heaven forbid, you fell off your bike and you scraped your knee, right? And you're on the side of the road and man, you can't even walk. You, you hurt your knee so bad. And a car drives by, an ambulance drives by. And they said, excuse me, sir, can I get you a Band-Aid? You look like you're kind of banged up or, or ma'am, right? What about if, if they offered you their help, would you say, nah, I'm going to think about it. I'll wait till the next ambulance comes by. Heck no. If you got a broken leg, you know, your knees banged up, of course you're going to accept their help. That's what we're looking for, people. We're looking for people that actually need our help. Because no matter no, no no amount of cajoling is going to talk someone that's just completely uninterested into being interested. Why? Because no one has ever been dragged kicking and screaming to the uh, the closing table. Does that make sense, folks? Yeah. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up in the chat. Okay. Very very important to understand. You are sorting for the right people. Okay. Great. So now we have gone through and we have booked a meeting with the right person using the right message at the right time. Bang. They're like, sure, I'll meet you at a specific place and a specific time. Okay. What comes up next, folks, is you got to prep for this meeting, right? What I like to do is call persuasion. Okay. I don't know if you've any, anyone's ever heard of the, a gentleman by the name of Robert Cialdini. He wrote a book called, uh, I think it's Influence the Art of Persuasion. I always mix up the title. I always say per, uh, Persuasion, the Art of Influence. Basically, he, he teaches all the shortcuts to, to, to thinking that, that um, advertisers use and, and, and different uh, marketers use to show you how to shortcut the, 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 the buying decisions, right? What it comes down to is we like to persuade. So instead of going there and influencing someone to persuade in front of them, when you persuade something is when you create a, 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 an action or a decision or something that what it allows you to do is a, a affect in advance um, the, the meeting. So in this case, we, we're going to have you send over information to them so that you persuade them that, that you are the person for the job, right? We have a very specific templates in our coaching program. We show you step by step by step how to do that. Okay. Also, the uh, most important part. And so this, this guys, if you're listening to anything today, okay, sharpen your pencil because we're about to get down to brass tacks. Valuation, okay? Very, very important to understand. I don't care how much 
you guys market or, or blast out or knock on doors or circular prospect or whatever, okay? I'm going to give you a very simple example and you're going to understand it immediately, okay? Let's say I were to take you guys and um, we're standing outside the, the local mall, okay? And I hand you over a crisp $20 bill. And I said, do me a favor, go out and bring me 20 singles back for this $20 bill, okay? Guys, scale of one to 10, how confident are you that if I gave you a $20 bill, you'd be able to go into the mall where there's 30, 40, 50 retailers and bring me back 20 singles? Type, type a, a, a one to 10. How many singles do you think that you'd be able to get me? You think, you, what, scale of one to 10, you think you can get me 20 singles, right? Go ahead, type that in. Let's, let's see what you guys are thinking, right? This is important, folks. This is very, very important, okay? Rocky, only seven? There we go. Okay, Olga's with me. 10, exactly. 10, 10, 10. right, exactly. Why? Because a $20 bill, okay? $20 bill is worth 20 bucks, okay? Here we go. This is the only $20 bill I got on me, right? $20 bill, guys. You can get 20 singles for this $20 bill. Now, let's say I gave you the same crisp $20 bill, and I said, go into the mall and find me 19 singles. Scale of one to 10, folks. How many people think they can get me 19 singles for this $20 bill? Type that in the chat. Let's see what we got. Scale of one to 10, how many people think they can get me 19 singles for a $20 bill? There we go. Boom. 10, 10, 10. All right. Olga's with me. Soraya's with me. Ricky's with me. Ro Ro Rosie's with you. Guys, that's what we're talking about. Okay, now I'm going to drive home the point of why valuation is so darn important. I give you a $20 bill and I ask you to bring me back 25 singles. How long do you think I'm going to be sitting there waiting, guys? Okay. How long is it going to take to get 25 singles? So scale of one to 10, how how capable do you think you're going to be to get a 25 singles for a $20 bill? Go ahead and type that in the chat. Soraya says one. Olga says one. Mickey says zero. Exactly, guys. There's 0.0, .0 chance. So listen, folks. Why do we take listings? But it's only 20% over market. It's only 25% overpriced. Guys, think about that. Who's ever going to give you $25 for a $20 bill. You guys with me? Okay. And here's the way it works, folks. Okay. The way it works is this. How many of you, show of hands. All right. Show of hands. Put those cameras on, guys. Let's see your beautiful faces. Show of hands real quick. Okay. How many of you have sons, daughters, nieces, nephews, younger brothers and sisters, grandchildren, young ones in, 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 your, in your family? Right? Right. Someone like under the age of five, let's say. You know, when, when the kids are their cutest. Okay. Okay. Now, here's what we got, guys. All right. Javier's with me. Mickey's with me. Okay. Cool. Aren't they the cutest little things in the world? Oh my God. So adorable. So amazing. Right. And yours is just a little bit cuter than your neighbor's. Why? Because it's yours. Right. I mean, that's my little, that's my little bambina. That's my little, my little whatever. Right. It might be your puppy. It might be your, your, your son, daughter, niece, nephew, grandchild, whatever. Okay. Guess what, guys? Everybody else feels the exact same way about the things that are theirs, okay? Whether it's their new puppy, whether it's their grandchild, whether it's their son or daughter, or whether it's their building, okay? Everyone thinks that theirs is just a little bit prettier than their neighbors. So that's what I call the ugly baby syndrome. Nobody has an ugly baby, right? Everybody thinks that their baby is a little bit prettier than their neighbors. You with me, guys? So everybody has the natural instinct to want to overprice their property, right? They just think for some reason, and it might have zero to do with logic, my property is just a little bit better than my neighbors because fill in the blank. Who's with me on that, guys? Type an exclamation point in the chat if you've ever dealt with that. And you're like, what are these people thinking? This thing is a turd, and somehow they think it's the Taj Mahal, right? Okay, Rick's with me. Yep, Sarai's with me. Braden, guys, this is, this is what we see over and over and over again. So it is so important for you guys to understand how to properly price 
especially income producing properties, it doesn't matter whether it's income producing or whether it's owner user, you have to be able to make a strong logical argument because you know from the get-go that nobody's got an ugly baby. How many of you, okay, uh, show of hands, have ever had someone want to drastically underprice their property to the market? Because they're like, ah, this is the terror. I just want to get rid of it and I'm going to leave it like 30% below the market. Guys, this just doesn't happen. It just, exactly, no way. Exactly, guys, that's what we're talking about, okay? So you need to understand how to price the property properly and use objective data to persuade them. Now, you know, you, a lot of people will say people buy emotionally and they justify uh, rationally. That's fine. You're not gonna get every single listing at the appropriate price. Fine, we have strategies for how to, how to handle that. We take care of that in step number eight. Don't worry about that. But guys, if you just go in there saying, hey, I, I think uh, your, your price is great. If you can sh give them reasons X, Y, Z, A, B, C. So to the point where when they say, no, I want to I want to list it at 40 percent above that, at least you have a, a logical, reasonable um, uh, understanding and then a case built around it. You got to almost think like a lawyer, like you have to build a case around why their property is worth what it's worth. Does that make sense, guys? You, was that resonating with you? Type a one in the chat if you're with me, right? Type a one in the chat if you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Cool. It's a test. They know what it's really worth. Believe it or not, Rick, that, that's an interesting comment. Um, a, a friend of mine and I, we, we used to say like, Rip Van Winkle can wake up from a 50-year nap with a big long beard down to his, his belly and still think his property like is worth 20% over the market. It's like uncanny, you know? But then again, no one likes to leave money on the table, but by the same token, it's one of those things where um, unless you kind of give them the facts, they'll get a little little wrapped up and carried away in, in the value of their property. Why? Because it's their baby, you know? Especially guys, if it's, if it's a investment properties, to a, to a slightly lesser degree, but owner user properties, if they bought that thing in 1992 and they sweated blood and they changed transmissions in there and, and, or if it was a dry cleaner and the person that's where they've, they've lived and breathed and like raised their family and so much guys, they are so attached to that property. Good luck getting them off of their number, right? That's why we have strategies for that down the road. Okay. So Folks, does this make sense? All right, so we're working backwards from the goal. You have to know who you should be reaching out to so that when you call them, you're delivering the right message at the right time and to the right person, okay? Next up, once you secure the meeting because you, you, you lined up all three of those factors, then you have to learn how to prep for that meeting. We are going to, begins with a pre, persuade them so that they understand that you are the right person for the job. It's almost by the time you get there, it's yours to lose, okay? And then finally, we need to know how to value properly. Folks, one and one will always equal two. I don't care if you're in 90210 or, or if you're in Washington, D.C. or Maine or California. It doesn't matter. One and one will always equal two. That's why I love this little line. Um, Mr. Seller. Brokers might come in and tell you stories, but the numbers will never lie to you. Is it okay if I share with you what it's going to take to get your property sold? And boom, you point to the numbers, okay? Very, very uh, important. Okay, let me just check the comments real quick. They trust Zillow more than they trust us. We must prove the case. Yeah, because Zillow's no fool. They, when they created that, uh, that, that Zillow... Uh, uh, algorithm, you know that it like inflated it just a little bit for sure. You know, um, just show them AI art and point out the hands and ask if they really trust AI with their house. Ooh, that's a good one. Eddie, that's the point folks, right? You know, people are going to believe what they want them, uh, want you to believe, but at the end of the day, one and one will always equal two. Okay, guys, is, is any of this like like opening up some light bulbs? Let's put your biggest uh, insight here today because what I want you folks to do, you guys that come to my weekly classes, and there's a bunch of you here, right? You guys that, that come here on a regular basis, I want you to do one thing for me. I want you to take and, and implement something you learned, whether it's just one a piece of the puzzle, it doesn't matter. What I want you to do, what I want to see you guys do is implement something you learned. So maybe uh, you create 
uh, what we call a brag pack. You know, maybe you after you set a meeting, you start sending people information so that it increases your chances of being able to sell them once you arrive there. Maybe you come up with a, a, a spreadsheet so you can show people at the listing presentation what their property is truly worth. Maybe you guys start, uh, those of you that have listings, start asking for price reductions, right? There's a whole lot of different ways you can start and implement what we went over today. But folks, I promise you, nothing changes until you do. So if you don't make small incremental changes in your business, I promise you that six months from now, 12 months from now, 24 months from now, you're going to be in the exact same position, if not worse. It's no secret that we have a looming recession. Type recession, if you guys have heard us talking about the, the, the economics, like number one, we're overdue. N and number two, like all the indicators that are, are pointing towards it. Okay, Melissa's with me. Kimberly's with me. Guys, like, and, I, and I, I'm not like a doom and gloom guy. I'm like rainbows and unicorns, but I'm not dumb. And I did study, you know, economics and business school enough to know that, you know, it, there, there's, a, there's a pretty good likelihood in the next 24 months. So my question to you, is what skill are you going to learn so that you can not only survive that recession, but thrive in it, okay? If you guys are interested in understanding how I have taken students who don't know anything about commercial and in 90 days time, 120 days time, 180 days time, turn them into commercial listing agents, type a one in the chat, guys. If that's something that you're interested in learning, if that's a skill set that you think would be valuable in the next six months so that you are ready to go before that recession hits, right? Because what did JFK say? The time to fix the roof is when the sun is shining, okay? You're not trying to fix the roof, right? You with me, guys? Okay, in, in the middle of a rainstorm, you're not trying to fix it during a hurricane, okay? So if you guys are with me and you want to learn more, but thank you so much for being here. Next week, we're going to finish off the signature system by going back to the beginning and how you get started. So if you guys are curious about how the, all the pieces fit together, next week is going to be what we need to tie it all into one nice bow. All right, folks. So thank you for being here. For those of you that, that uh, already booked calls, I look forward to speaking to you. And uh, I look forward to, uh, to seeing the rest of the students that are here in class tomorrow night. Have a good one, folks. Look forward to you. Bye-bye.